Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Bible in One Year with the Preacher's Husband. That's me. Today we're going through Genesis chapter 43, 44, and 45. So to set the stage, the famine is getting worse. Okay, we're a couple years into it now. And these are scenes that you would see all over the place. Livestock just dying because of the lack of food, lack of water. Other animals eating them because... That's the only food left was dead animals. The scavenger birds, I'm sure, are having a good time, but that's about it. Um, There's desolation, no water, no food to be had. Everything's dying off. So, here's the scenario. The brothers, they're running out of food, too. And their dad, they're they're out of food. So, dad says, hey, y'all, pack up. Go to Egypt and get some more food. Here's you some silver. Go buy some food. The brother's like, whoa, we can't go back there without Benjamin. They said that we couldn't come back unless we brought the youngest son with us. And daddy's not having it. He's like, no, that's not going to happen. Well, they talk some sense into daddy. And Judah comes to him and says, I will be responsible for Benjamin. Anything happens to him, I will be personally responsible for it. And dad said, fine, that's what's going to happen. You're responsible for Benjamin. So they take off. They tear off towards Egypt. So they get to Egypt, and immediately Joseph recognizes them. And he has his men grab them and take them to his house. And he said, come on, you go into the house. So they're a little nervous about this. They're like, man, why did we get scooped up? We just came. He was like telling the story, look, dude, we're really just here to buy some food. That first time we came, we were just here to buy food then, too. And y'all gave us our silver back. And there he's like. I got your silver the last time. What are you talking about? We, you're, you're fine. There's nothing bad's going to happen. Calm down. Chill out. Don't worry. We're going to have us some food. We're going to have us a little party tonight. Things are going to be great. Just wait. And then, of course, it was. Joseph comes in and he says, Serve the meal! But Joseph sits at a table by himself, kind of away from them, because... Number one, the Egypt, Egyptians sat at one table by themselves. The guests sat at another table, and then Joseph sat at another table because Hebrews were not allowed to eat with Egyptians together at the same table. Just a cultural thing. So, didn't happen. And then, Joseph commanded his stewards after the meal to fill the man's bags with as much food as you can carry and put each one silver at the top of his bag. Put my cup, the silver one, at the top of the youngest one's bag along with the silver for his grain. And they did, as Joseph told him. So uh, he bids them adieu. They take off back to home. And then, lo and behold, Joseph had sent his men behind them. And when they caught up to him, they said, Halt there, you have stolen something of Joseph's. Or basically of, of the leader, not Joseph. Because they, they don't know he's Joseph yet. You've stolen something from from the, our leader. And they're like, why would we do that? I mean, we... Y'all gave us our silver back. Why would we do this kind of thing? There's there's nothing. Why would we steal? You gave us so much to begin with. And uh, they said, well, let's search it. So they do. They search it. And lo and behold, they find it in Benjamin's bag. And they're like, Benjamin, what? Benjamin's like, what? I didn't. I, I got nothing. So they take them back. Packing it back, right back into Egypt. So there they are. And... Joseph is basically like, look, this guy, he's going to be my slave from now on because he stole from me. So that young and he's going to stay here, but I'll let y'all go. Y'all head back, tell your daddy that I have got this young and as my slave. And they're like, no, we can't do that. That'll kill him. If we do that, he will be completely dead. It'll, it'll, it'll break his heart to the point that he dies. At that point, Joseph was so overcome by emotion. He couldn't hold back any longer. So what does he do? He reveals himself to them and he tells them, Look, I am Joseph. He basically says, Send everybody away. So all the Egyptians leave the room. There's nobody in there but the brothers and Joseph. And he basically tells them, Look, I'm Joseph. I'm, is my father still living? But they couldn't answer him because they were so terrified in his presence. And then Joseph said, please come near me. I am Joseph, your brother, the one who you sold into slavery into Egypt. And now don't be grieved or angry with yourselves for selling me here because God sent me ahead of you to preserve life. 
That verse 5 is huge to me. And now don't be grieved or angry with yourselves for selling me here because God sent me ahead of you to preserve life. Did you hear that? God sent him ahead to preserve life for them. If they hadn't have sold Joseph into slavery, they would not have been prepared for the famine. Neither would Egypt. And where would they have gotten food? They may have all been dead by this time. And it's... That's a pretty sad thing that it could have happened. So, anyway, they're all excited. And basically, they they realize what happened. And everybody forgives each other. And then Joseph threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept. And Joseph kissed each of his brothers as he wept. And afterwards, his brothers talked with him. And then they returned. They were he, Joseph had them return to... Um, to get Jacob to bring him. But when Pharaoh heard about what was going on, he's like, whoa, 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 hold up now. Your brothers are here? Um, I tell you what, tell your brothers, do this. Load your animals and go on the back of the land, of, and go, go on back to the land of Canaan. Get your father and your families and come back to me. I'll give you the best land in Egypt and you can eat from the richness of the land. And better yet, tell them this too. Tell them, take wagons with them from the land of Egypt. For your dependents and for the wives and the and the the children and to bring your father here in these wagons and don't be concerned about your belongings because the best of the land of Egypt is yours. So they went back and they told Jacob and well Israel they told Israel and Israel said enough my son Joseph is still alive I will go see him before I die. Now. I'm, I'm reminded a bit historically of that. Remember that verse I read to you twice, verse five, uh, Genesis 45, verse 5. It said, For God sent me before you to preserve life. I'm reminded of God made rights and God made man. God made man and God made rights, both. He made us both. And Clarence Mannion, he was the dean of the Notre Dame College of Law from 1941 to 1952, and he stated concerning the Declaration of Independence, he said, Look closely at these self-evident evident truths, these imperishable articles of American faith upon which all our government is firmly based. First and foremost is the existence of God. Next comes the truth that all men are equal in the sight of God. Third is the fact of God's great gift of unalienable rights to every person on earth. Then follows the true and single purpose of all American government, namely to preserve and protect these God-made rights of God-made man. <sighs> Blessings. I hope this has touched you. If it has, please share it with somebody so that they can hear about it as well. Let's continue the Bible and tomorrow we're going to be doing Genesis chapter 46 and 47. Hit that like button, subscribe button, and of course click the little notification jingle bell so you can get notified the next time I upload a video. And I will see you tomorrow.